Hi, welcome to a live learning event. I'm Ellen Gormley, and I didn't um, tell you guys that I was going to go live today, but I needed some instant gratification <laughs> on this Sunday afternoon. So I was playing with this uh, spiral star hexagon motif last night, and I thought you guys might enjoy a little lesson on it. So I have with me, um, and if anybody arrives, if you could just throw in the chat that you can hear me and uh, that everything is going well. If you join me, that would be great. Otherwise, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. So this hex hexagon, lacy hexagon, is so easy. It looks complicated, but and it's very impressive because it looks complicated, but it's all single crochets and chains, and you totally can do this. You know, you know that I believe that re that crochet is a relaxing and valuable use of our time. Hey, Deb Johnny, hello. Can you hear me okay? So I like uh, projects that I can think a little bit, but they're totally impressive. Good morning, Chris. But also, I don't want it to be so hard that I don't enjoy it or that I don't get in a rhythm. Okay, so I was playing with this motif last night, and this is Knit Picks Shine Worsted. This is uh, the yarn from the one of the yarns from the Tour of Purples. Hello, Martha. Hello, Emmy. And I grabbed this motif book, this old... Uh, Harmony Guide, 220 More Crochet Stitches, Volume 7, and it's an old library copy that I got from some library, and it's published in 1992, so it's quite a gem. So I got the item from here, and actually I wanted to find a um, post-it note, and I forgot to find one from, I forgot to find one from before I started, so shoot. Okay, the reason I wanted a post-it note, hello, hello, welcome, is because this is one of the few patterns I have found where the diagram was almost worse <laughs> than the written instructions. So the diagram, look at that, it's almost more confusing in a way because it's nothing but single crochets and chains. Hey, Carlene, thank you so much for coming. I didn't give you any warning, you all, so thank you so much for being here. So the diagram is almost more confusing than the written instructions on this particular item I found. I found myself looking at the written instructions more than the diagram. It looks hard, yeah, it does, but it's only single crochets and chains, and so you totally can do this. So you have a minute, I'm gonna get started right away, but if you wanna grab a yarn and a hook, let's, uh, Let's get working on this. Okay, so I was gonna get a post-it note so that we could read the instructions together, um, but you know, let's just wing it, okay? So it's interesting because I made two of them and I used the same hook and one turned out to be a, quite a bit bigger than the other one. <laughs> so I guess as I got in the rhythm, the smaller one went first and the larger one went second. I guess when I got in the rhythm and relaxed a little bit, my gauge got bigger. So anyway, should I, I guess the purple might show up better on camera than the gray, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take the gray. This is the North Shore yarn that is part of the leftovers from the Lenora, uh, summer of Babies blanket. And I have a Knitter's Pride hook that I unboxed in that Knitter's Pride haul. And I was going to give this a try because if I love this set, I'm going to buy a set for myself in addition to using it as a prize or a gift or something in when I finally get to teach in real life again. Okay, so for this pattern, I'm going to read to you some of the instructions and we'll kind of take it as it goes. So it'll kind of be a read and stitch along kind of event. I hope everybody is doing well today. I'm so sorry I didn't get you a video yesterday. I like having videos on Saturday as well, but um, life has gotten complicated again, as usual. Okay, so in the instructions, I know you probably can't see this on the screen, it says, the note is, this motif is worked as a continuous spiral. The size can be therefore be increased or decreased as required. So once you get the rhythm of it, you can make it as big or as small as you want. So I have a stitch marker ready to help me keep track of my rounds on the spiral. Hey, if you like this kind of learning event, this live learning event, give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. And then I do wanna schedule like a real big one in mosaic for you guys as a celebration for the um, all the subscribers. So thank you very much. So it's a spiral, so therefore we're not gonna be joining, and so that's why I want a, a marker handy for 
and then I'll move the marker as we go. The first round, it says make two chains and work six SC into second chain from hook, slip stitch into first single crochet. Now this book was written back in 1992, so it's a little bit of a different um, style of writing than I'm used to, but it's still understandable. So I wanna put the slip knot on the hook. I'm going to chain two, one, two. I'm going to work six single crochet in the second chain from the hook. One, two, so there'll be six there. One, two, and it'll get a little bit tight, but that's okay because it'll make a nice tight little hole for the center of our motif. Three, four, five, six. Hey, Carlene, I can't see the little picture, but <laughs> I'll go back and look at it later. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we are not join, oh, it does say slip stitch in the first single crochet. Okay, even though we're doing a spiral, it does want us, oh, Theo. <laughs> oh, good, you used the little, um, the little emojis. Thank you, Carlene. So our channel members have the privilege or, you know, of um, being able to use a Theo emoji. Um, I think I've got Hobie hook yarn and I don't even remember what else, but um, check out the join function under any one of my videos and see what it takes to become a, a channel member. So I'm slip, slip stitching. Theo giving me a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, so I slip stitched in that first single crochet. Now it says continue in a spiral as follows. One chain. Okay, got that. Work one single crochet in the same stitch as the last stitch. Got it, okay, single crochet in the same spot. Finish off that single crochet. I'm gonna place my marker here, although the pattern does not tell me where to place the marker, but I am gonna place the marker here in the first stitch of the round. Then I am going to chain three, because it says three CH, so I'm gonna take that to mean three chains, and I did make these already, so I kinda know what, what to expect a little bit. And then it says one single crochet into next single crochet, okay. Got it? It's a little hard to see because my thumb's in the way. And then chain three, and we're gonna do that last bit sequence six times. So usually, and, and that's what in a bracket. So in a bracket, if it says six times, it usually means repeat it a total of six times. So there was one, <laughs> right here, one. And so a single crochet in the next single crochet and chain three makes two. And let's make sure that we, whatever we decide to do, we do it the same way henceforth. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have like, designed something and wrote it down and thought I knew exactly what I was doing and started making it from memory and then went back and realized that I did it wrong. But as long as you're doing it wrong, the same all the way through, it doesn't matter. Then it becomes the new right. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, and the last chain three to make six. Okay, so we did that six times. Then it says new bracket, Skip one single crochet. Okay, I'm gonna skip that first single crochet that is marked. Single crochet into the next single crochet. Okay, wait a minute, let's see. I guess we're skipping this one. So then we will single crochet in the marked one. And this is where the new rhythm begins and it's a lot easier after this first row first round rather. So single crochet where the marked one was, we're kind of skipping the last one on the six at the beginning. So this is where we are. We've got this little flower thing going. So we've done that and we're going to uh, two single crochets in the space. Okay, I'm gonna move that marker into that stitch I just made because I like to keep track of where the beginning of the round is so I don't get confused and just keep going without thinking. Place two single crochets in the chain three space. 
Then I'm going to chain one, two, three. Make sure that I'm in the right line. And this whole like block of text is a little bit hard to keep track of. That's why I wanted a sticky note so I could like move it down, but it's okay because let's see, two single crochet in the next chain, three space, chain three and do that six times. So what we're doing now, and this establishes the rhythm for the whole motif from here. We will single crochet in the last single crochet before the chain three space and then put two in this chain three space. And then we're gonna build. We're gonna do one, two, three chains. So single crochet in the next one, two in the chain three space, one, two. I like this hook, it's very thin though. And thin is not a problem for a hook, except that if you have arthritis or, you know, I can see my, I could imagine my hand getting somewhat tense because it is so narrow. Like I kind of have to hold it a little bit tighter. So I'm not sure that I want to do hours with such a thin hook, but it's pretty. <laughs> and you know, I like pretty hooks. Okay. How's everybody doing? Thanks for being here today on this Sunday afternoon. As you guys may know, <clears throat> my puppy, Hobie, was attacked by a deer two weeks ago, and he has been doing really well. Could I use my other hook to mark your place in text? Oh, yeah, I guess it could. It would probably roll, but it's all right. I probably could just lay it here. You're right. It's heavy enough. <laughs> Let's see. I think we're here. <laughs> Hobie was attacked by a deer two weeks ago. He's doing really well. His stitches came out the other day, but now he has a suspicious spot of swelling that we are going to have examined uh, by the doctor tomorrow. So at the end of that, we're gonna skip, we're not joining henceforth. We only joined them that very beginning first round and then we're working in a spiral from here. So it says skip one single crochet. So we're actually skipping the marked one. Single crochet in each of the next two, which would be this one and this one, and then place two more here in the chain three space. So this is where we're headed. This is road mapping where we're going. So we're skipping the first one, single crocheting in the next two, yeah, so he's gonna have surgery tomorrow to try and figure out what's going on and to try and fix whatever is still damaged from what that murderous deer did to my boy. Okay. And then we are two, the, the new rhythm becomes two in the chain whatever space. <laughs> and on this round, we're chaining four instead of three. One, two, three, four. So we have one, two, three, four single crochets, one, two, three, four chains on this round. You're finishing the pride shawl for next year's state, okay? Okay, we're skipping one, then we'll do one, two in the existing single crochets, and then two in the chain three space. So we have done four single crochets, so we're gonna chain four, state fair. Very good, that sounds like fun. Okay, skipping one, single crochet in the next one and two. Okay, you following along, seeing how this is building? Give you a nice solid look here. Oh, since Minnesota canceled this year. Man, everything was canceled this year, isn't it? <laughs> so much. One, two, three, four. So now we're beginning and these points are starting to develop. So you can see how the each chain is gonna get just a little bit longer, just as these sections of single crochet are gonna get just a little bit longer each time. So we're skipping one, single crocheting in two. Yeah, everything is a huge bummer this year, right? <laughs> we just gotta keep looking forward. Gotta keep looking forward. Okay. One, two, three, four. Yes, thank you. He goes into surgery at 8.15 Eastern tomorrow morning. If you're the praying type, I'd really appreciate a prayer for him. It's kind of ironic that also tomorrow is the anniversary of my mom's passing 23 years ago. So I'm hoping my mom will say an extra special prayer for him 
as we say a special prayer for her. Okay. Thank you, Carly. Thank you, everybody. So just worried about my boy. Okay, one, two, three, four. So it's starting to build here and starting the spiral takes a while to start to see, but it is happening. It is happening. So on the next line, we're um, again, not joining, skipping one single crochet. We will single crochet in each of the next three. So skipping this marked one, single crocheting in one, two, three, and then placing two in the chain space. And so this is how we will continue to grow until we decide that we are done with this motif because you can keep going in this pattern indefinitely. So the first single crochet, I move the marker. And then I think I'm worried because he can't tell me how he's feeling. I think I've decided that that's why I'm so worried because he can't tell me how I'm feeling. And the doctor isn't terribly sure what's going on. So that of course is worrisome too. So that makes one, two, three, four, five single crochets. So I'm gonna chain five. One, two, three, four, five. We're doing the same number of um, chains as we did single crochets. So we're skipping the first one and we're kind of moving these uh, single crochet rows on the diagonal just a little bit. And that is what makes the spiral action happen. One, two, three, four, five. So if you guys are just joining me, hello. Yeah, they can't verbalize. Yeah, if you guys um, are just joining in, we are making the spiral star hexagon live. We're kind of reading instructions and going as we go along. So if you've missed the beginning of this video, it's gonna take a while to process. These live videos always do, but later uh, today it should be ready and you can click on it from the beginning and see how we set up this uh, gorgeous little star motif from the beginning. So we've, again, continuing the pattern of skipping the first single crochet, single crocheting in each of the next single crochets. Do you see how easy this is, friends? It's like, just single crochets and chains. And you can make this motif as big as you want. However, I will say that my own personal preference is that when my, when my lines of chains get longer, I feel like mine gets sloppier. <laughs> so I tend to like to stop before they get too, I don't know, uneven, I guess. So you can make this motif as big or small as you want, but I prefer to stop before it gets too untidy because I feel like when I have big lines of chains, I tend to get them kind of skewed or cattywampus or something. So skipping one. Are you guys crocheting today? Are you getting a lot of crochet done this uh, spring and summer now that summer is here? Are you working with cotton or wool? Yep. <laughs> I was so proud of myself for actually getting the uh, Summer of Babies blankets made in time for the baby shower. Um, there was a little photo I put up on Instagram of Erica receiving Marley's blanket and uh, Jessica receiving Nora's blanket one, two, three, four, five, lots of cotton blends. So I wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much for your prayers for baby Marley um, and my whisper shawl. Yeah, that's on my to-do list. So back to that in just a moment. I wanted to thank you guys for the good wishes and vibes for baby Marley. She was a little tiny here lately, um, but she is continuing to grow. So they decided to leave her in um, Erica for as long as possible and not induce labor. So that's really good news. She is due in about three weeks. Working through your cotton stash to make dishcloths. All right. I love dishcloths for um, learning new stitches and they're just very useful items. I love making washcloths out of really soft yarn and then um, giving them away with a pretty soap as a gift. You have a crochet journal. Each finished object is marked with quarantine. <laughs> yeah, so one, two, three, let's see. I skipped the first one like we have been. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, two of them in the chain space. That means it's time to chain six. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. A lot going on in this world. It seems like my prayer list gets longer and longer every day. But I guess, you know, that's okay. <laughs> we'll just keep making that prayer list as long as it needs to be. That's all right. I have to like actually have a paper and pencil list. It's actually on my phone, but I actually have a list now. One, two, three, four, five, six, chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I've gotten in the habit of ending my prayers with, oh yeah, and everybody else that I want to pray for that I have forgotten. <laughs> because, you know, God knows. <laughs> Your grand was born 10 weeks early and weighed over two pounds, but now he's a rambunctious two-year-old. Oh, that's fantastic. That is so good to hear. So we don't really know why ba baby Marley is small, but you know what? I I feel like they don't always know um, how what size a baby is going to be before the baby's born. I feel like sometimes they make mistakes when they guess. And Theo is pawing at the door, so I'm going to put this down and let you look at it for just a moment while I open the door. Buddy. Come on. Come on. Okay, and we have one, two, three, four, five. Close the door. All right, so I've got one more to do in the chain space. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're continuing in this. Now, this one I made until I got to eights. Um, I don't know why it felt like a good stopping point. This is a thinner yarn than the purple uh, Knit Picks Shine Worsted, which is a cotton crocus. So if you guys were looking at cotton yarns, this one's 60% Pima cotton and 40% modal. It is very soft. Like I would not hesitate to wash my face with that. It's very, very soft. Not for kitchen necessarily. I feel like kitchen yarn needs to have a little bit more grab to it so that it can scrub away a mess. But for my face, I want something a lot softer. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. I do want to also show you how I joined the second motif to the first. Two, three. Or I also owe you guys the Nora PDF of the blank, the Nora blanket that I haven't finished writing down yet. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. At least with this whole stay at home order, I've been back to running, which is fun. And um, been busy, obviously, with the dog. We've been taking turns staying with him as much as possible and not leaving him alone, although he's doing pretty darn well. Tom and Patrick went on a hiking trip, so us girls were home for a while. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if I were fastening off, at this point, I would just slip stitch into that first marked stitch and fasten off. Yes, joining can make a great scarf or shawl. Absolutely. I think this would make a fantastic shawl. Um, especially in a lace or fine uh, yarn. And if you did it in a really long color change yarn, I could see this being really dramatic. Okay, let's do maybe one more round and then we will um, join. So I'm gonna skip the first marked stitch, do one more round. So single crochet in the next one, move my marker so that I know the beginning of the round. Single crochet in each of the single crochets in the rest of the row. Place two in the chain space. And I think we're up to seven now. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I will chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Knitting a dish rag scratchy out of that red heart scrubby yarn for your aunt. She loves it for cleaning pots and pans. Absolutely love the last one to pieces. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So we will skip all of the chains, skip the first single crochet and single crochet in the next. You're so late. That's okay, Ruthie. I was just saying this is the um, spiral star hexagon and I did start it from the very beginning. So after I fasten off and leave uh, the video today, it'll take mm, 
probably close to an hour, I'm guessing, before it finishes processing. And then the whole video will be available on YouTube indefinitely. Five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a very easy pattern. It's a little bit harder to set up in the first two rounds, but then after that, the pattern is easily memorizable. So it's a great portable pattern. It really helps us uh, with my motto, which is a that crochet is a relaxing and valuable use of our time. I think it's a very rhythmic and relaxing pattern. It's not hard. It's all single crochets and chains. Three, four, five, six, seven. Skip one single crochet, single crochet, and all the rest. Okay, as I'm getting to the last two corners here, let me see where I am at. So, okay, here we go. Okay, I've got uh, two corners left to work. And so I would, when I, when I join motifs to previously made ones, I do like to lay them down and kind of roadmap where I'm going. Now this is a smaller yarn and um, I got big on this one somehow. <laughs> so they're not the right size, it's a different yarn. So um, you can join any way you want, but generally we try to join um, matching sized motifs to each other, but this is just for demonstration purposes. I am going to go ahead and join. I'm laying it out where I wanna join. I wanna join in the chain spaces like I did here. Now this one I just chained in the space, so that means it moves around a lot and I'm not sure that I like that. So I just, I'm gonna show you both methods. So what happened was for joining those, yeah the, yeah, the diagram is, but it's all just single crochets and chains. Um, but because it's small, what I would do, friends, is put this on a photocopier and blow it up. Because I think it looks worse because it's small. And the bigger you make it, the easier it would be. Also, because it's worked in a spiral and not joined, it's like impossible to tell where the start and finish of each round is. And so then if you made a big um, photocopy, you could write on it or take a ruler and draw a line where like the row is, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Okay, so how I joined these corners up here, what I did was I removed my hook from the loop. I stuck my hook in where I wanna go put the loop back on my hook, pulled the whole thing through the hole, and then just did my one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, three, four, five, six, seven chains. So it will kind of slide around when you do that. That is one method of joining. I didn't love that method, so let's uh, brainstorm some other ones now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Go back to the current motif and single crochet in each of the single crochets. I think for this one, because I don't want it to slide around, I'm going to choose to single crochet in a specific chain or slip stitch in a specific chain. So get those two in there in the chain three space before we decide to join. Lay it down so you know that you're getting in the right corner. And remember, hexagons can stack. And then you would jog like the next round of hexagons here and here and here. They're kind of offset just a little bit. So here, instead of removing my hook and putting the hook in here and grabbing and pulling through, what I think I'm going to do is instead of seven cha uh, chains, I am going to slip stitch where I want it to be anchored. So I'm going to slip stitch in, I think this one here, one, two, the second one, where I feel like the point naturally wants to be. So I'm gonna go look for it, one, two. I'm gonna grab two loops of it. I think I'm gonna grab the back loop and a side loop. Slip stitch, pull it through, and that counts as one. And then I'll do six more, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then skip one and continue in the same rhythm until we finish 
the motif. And then let's lay it down and see how the two different join methods work. Six, seven, and finish with your chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to slip stitch in that marked first stitch of the round and fasten off there. Okay, so now we have the original number first motif, then I joined. The next motif, I got a little bit looser on my gauge as I got more comfortable with the pattern, why swatching is so important. I used a different yarn, made this new motif. I feel like the pattern doesn't pop as much in the lighter color as it does the darker color, but you can see the spiral happening like a little whirly gig or a, is that what you call them? Pinwheel, that's what I was looking for, pinwheel. So when you join by kind of moving the hook out, this slides around and that's fine, but I didn't really like it. So when I slip stitch in a particular chain, it's not going anywhere, it's static. So I think that'll be more stable of a joining for this particular pattern. And I think I would use that one, but it's totally up to you. Well, thank you so much for joining me. After this video processes, I will put cards up here for you to see the tour of purples, where this purple came from, and also the um, Knitter's Pride <laughs> um, unboxing so that you can see the hook and all the other hooks and goodies that came in that package. But I think that's all for today, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for joining me, and I will create something for you for Wednesday. So have a great day, everybody. Bye.